not everybody can visualize well. What do you do then? Can you improve visualization in the mind, like holding an image or what have you? We have five knowledge senses with the help of which we see, taste, touch, smell, feel, hear. These five knowledge senses, they utilize the external organs, the eyes, the ears, etc. They reside in the subtle form in the mind itself. And that is why the mind, without the help of the external organs, is able to see, taste, touch, smell, feel, hear, as you experience in your dream. You see, in the dream, the eyes are closed, and yet, you experience your running, tasting, smelling, hearing. So these five senses exist in the mind in the subtle form. Nevertheless, everybody's got them differently developed. Somebody is more visual. Somebody is more towards the hearing. Somebody is more towards smell. So those who don't have the visual instinct developed very much would experience this problem that they don't easily visualize. They could utilize the others, the smells. For example, you could visualize a wonderful scenic, idyllic valley in the midst of the mountains and the emotions that it invokes so along with that, you keep the smells and the sounds more than the visuals. But that apart, anything can be developed with practice. So if you find that you are not a visual person and decide that you would like to develop that ability, as you start practicing, you'll find it will keep growing. It seems that a lot of techniques you talked about are useful for achieving goals that you set for yourself, and some of them seem universal, like better health. But how do you think about the goals you should set? Because someone could set themselves a goal of, I want to get promoted, get promoted, and then realize they're not happier. Or use the phrase prosperity in your talk. Prosperity, I took to mean material prosperity. A lot of people might use material prosperity and not be happier. So how do you think about the end goals that people should be setting for themselves? What we discussed in this talk is a tool, right? So visualization, self-talk is a tool in your hands. Now, how do you utilize it? The same tool can be used for something good or for something bad. But that decision requires knowledge. So to make the decision which goal is beneficial, which goal is not beneficial, that would require knowledge. That is where you access the divine wisdom okay, of the different spiritual traditions of the world. My, from my tradition, I access the wisdom of the Bhagavad Gita and utilize that to understand which goals are beneficial and which are not. I have two questions. So for individuals that are fearful, how do they visualize themselves being less fearful? And Two, for those that are um, not as visual, how effective are visual words? Fear is a symptom. Fear is the symptom of clinging on. It's an attachment that causes the fear. Okay, just like if somebody has fever. Now, fever is not the disease. Fever is the symptom. And the disease may be malaria or whatever, a virus. Similarly, fear is coming because we are clinging on to something. This must happen or this must not happen. That is what is causing the fear. So if we could just reduce that clinging, that would resolve the fear. And the second thing about visualization, in my understanding and experience, even if somebody is not very visual, the power of visualization is still the most powerful. So if you really wish to transform yourself quickly, then try 
and master this one tool. As a spiritual teacher, I teach people meditation, how to love God. And I see that if I can teach them how to visualize, they immediately, 50% of the journey gets completed. They get a basis to absorb their mind. So in the human personality, visualization always remains extremely important. Yeah, so my question, I, I did uh, hear a lot of stories about the power of thought. So I just want to know how far it can go. Like, is it possible to defy that? Because I've heard people levitating. I don't know how true it is, but if someone can visualize levitation, do you think it is possible to, you know, actually defy gravity or things like that, physical laws? Sometimes I think people take it a bit too far. <laughs> This law of attraction is extremely popular in the West, and I think it is too simplistic. Just keep thinking I will become rich, I am rich, I am rich. <laughs> it's not enough. Thinking will help you develop the attitudes, the convictions. After that, you have to put in the necessary effort as well. So in the law of attraction, they are missing out on that one effort. Now when it comes to something like levitation, you are right. Thoughts are extremely powerful. And if you have done a little bit of spiritual reading in some of the spiritual traditions, you would have read that when people focus their minds to that extent and they, they are able to develop that kind of absorption, then automatically they develop naturally spiritual attainments but also these material attainments. So levitation is a material attainment. It does come as the consequence of focusing the thoughts. So my question would be along the line of uh, the previous questions. There's a fine line between visualizations and delusional. What is technical on how one should realize when you are crossing that line? This is a tool. If you use a tool the wrong way, it has a negative impact on, on our well-being. Now, what I explained to you is the conscious and the subconscious. The mind can also be divided in another way. This is how the Bhagavad Gita explains. There is the intellect and there is the mind. The intellect is the rational faculty that is reasoning out, that has got the ability for logic, for discrimination. And the mind is harboring the sentiments, the emotions, the hankerings and the aversions. So, the intellect needs to be used to rein in the mind. Okay? If we let go of the intellect, then we become delusional. So, in the same way, if we are visualizing, we do need to use the conscious mind to control what kind of visualization. If the conscious mind, the ability of the intellect is not utilized, then definitely it can become harmful. Yeah, I, uh, I think they say you can will what you want, but you can't will what you will. In other words, the efforts are in your hands, right? So you can will what you want, but the results are not in your hands. The results come because of many reasons. The results can come because of your past efforts, that is the law of karma. The results can come because of the efforts of the others, or just sheer chance you happen to be at the wrong place or the right place at that time. So the results are never in your hands. You cannot will what will happen, but you can will what you want. So your job is to put in your best efforts. That's what the Bhagavad Gita is saying. Karmani vadhikara stay. Put in your best efforts. Mark Malaysia. Leave the results. But what you want is also probably different, right? Somebody probably wants to be a senior or somebody just wants to be an engineer. And those tendencies are also probably coming from somewhere. No, that's the soul. You, you have a free will. Okay, so to recognize that free will and to utilize it for your benefit, that is the preliminary requisite 
for transforming yourself, for enhancing, for improving yourself. If you relinquish that free will, you know, I cannot change what I want to will, then you will not be able to effect that self-transformation. You have a free will and you can utilize it for your benefit. Thank you for the talk. Uh, I guess a simple question, what daily practices do you recommend? Since you have asked me, I am a spiritual teacher. Okay? So I am not just a motivational coach, I am a spiritual teacher. And what spirituality adds to this is that not only are you visualizing self-improvement or having the positive self-affirmation, you are also trying to purify your mind. And the way to purify is to attach the mind to the all-pure. So my personal practice, which I teach in sessions, is that you engage in such self-talk, you chant the names of God. And you visualize the image of the Supreme Divinity in whichever way you worship Him. And that will bring about a complete transformation because you will find that your mind is becoming pure, your subconscious is getting purified. And when the subconscious is pure, the conscious is pure, the thoughts that you harbor will automatically become pure. So it is said if you can just take out one hour every day for a personal practice, just like to remain healthy uh, because you are engaging in sedentary work here for so long, so those who are conscious of, of maintaining the health as a wealth, they dedicate some time for their health. So one hour if they can take out for their body, it ensures that the body continues to function well. And another one hour for the mind. So that is the personal spiritual practice. So two hours, one for your body and one for I have put up an online course for spiritual practice. This is called mydailysadhana.org. Mydailysadhana.org. It's if anybody wants, we can send you a one month promotion. All those who have attended, wherever I have a program, all those who attend, we send them a one month free subscription. After that, you're welcome to have the paid subscription. I'd like to thank everybody for having invited me here today. It's been a pleasure to